Hello, hello. Happy Monday. As you pop on, say hi. Tell me what you're working on these days. I got to get everything situated here and then hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I can see comments. I can't yet. Well, you guys, I tell you what. Can't see comments on there. Now I can see a few. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Cora. Hi, Mom. Ah. Oh. At least, if nothing else, I'm entertainment for you guys, right? <laughs> Hi, Barbara. Hi, Bonnie. Sarah. Hi, Jean. Jean. Um, before I forget, did you already get your yarn for the sweater or do I still have yarn for you? I couldn't find my note. So will you put in the comments and let me know? I got a bunch of Melibri go in and I have some set aside for you, but then I couldn't remember if I had already given it to you or not. Hi, Cindy, just finished the butterfly shawl. Uh, did the recipient get it yet? I hope she loved it. Uh, hi, Marcina. Hi, Holly. Working on Divine Drape. Lisa, Firework Sleeves. Debbie, Clue 10 of Snarkometer. This one seemed like it took me a long time. Bonnie, thank you. I like my sweater too. This is one that I just, it's one of my cozy ones. Oh. I can't. Oh, there we go. I might have found what I need. Oh, you guys, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. You won't show me any comments. Not in the way I want. Hi, E. Jean finished your short row scarf, cool. Sarah trying to get something. <laughs> yes, always cast on something new for retreat. I feel like we need things that have to be finished and things that we want to start. So we have like a memory of what we worked on while we were at our retreat. Ani, working on your Sonoma. Had you ordered two colors? Okay, Jean, then I'm good. I've got that set aside for you. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Melissa, did I see? No. Wait, what's your text? Nothing's coming through on anything. Uh, hi, Nicole. Hi, Noel. Definitely playing with a new Chai Gu set. Excellent. Probably doing sleeves. Mom, knitting on You Are Enough. Tammy working on what? What's Tammy working on today? Oh, no matter what, I can't. I can't get this thing to just tell me comments when they're supposed to be comments. Ah. Oh. Mom needs something simple enough. Yes, I may. I just started a new sweater. I may keep the body of the sweater um, set aside so I can just knit on it at retreat. Joyce figured out how to watch on TV, but not how to comment on there. <laughs> so hi, Julie, working on the body of your sorrel. Yay! I apologize. I can't get this thing to just scroll my comments. So I'm having to keep scrolling and it's not working the way I want it to. I... Well, that's not, that's not it either. I need somebody to be like a Facebook expert and tell me how to get this the way I want it. Cause I just can't figure it out. 
it won't show me things. Now it's showing me some comments. I see Tammy can't comment on, on your laptop. That's weird. <laughs> the swirl. Melissa's going so she's gotten so far though on that, on her swirl. It's going well. All right, I think maybe I haven't figured out. Ugh. I worked up a sweat trying to uh, trying to get comments. Hi, Diane. It's good to have you back on here with me. Bonnie. I want to see a picture of you in your summer shandy. Okay, guys, I I, uh, I should probably give my official start here. So welcome to Monday Motivation. My name's Kristen. I am the owner of the Little Yarn Shop in downtown Saginaw, Michigan. We're open Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. I'm on live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So um, except next Monday, because next Monday for real, is Labor Day and I will not be doing a live <laughs> next Monday. Uh, but other than that, every Monday at seven, uh, you get to, tonight you get to see me, see this box it. Ah. You get to see some yarn. We get to talk about knitting and crocheting and all kinds of good stuff. So um, I like you guys are all telling me what you work, what you're working on, what I am wearing. A couple of you commented on my sweater. I, oh, isn't this color just gorgeous? It's uh, the summer, or the pattern is Portage by Melissa Sheshwary. And I put thumb holes in there because I think every sweater should have thumb holes. It was supposed to have these really long puffs and I decided it needed a thumb hole. The yarn is Malabrigo Arroyo in the color Va, V-A-A. -A. It's just this beautiful, You'll, you'll see a theme here today. There's a lot of blue green, this beautiful bluey green color. I did alternate skeins because, you know, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit um, OCD about that. Erin working on a super secret Christmas gift. Ah! Oh, mom swirls in time now, yes. All right, you guys, I don't know, this is, One's way slower than the other. So I'm trying here. So Portage, what I like about it is it's cozy. It wraps up. It is meant to be worn open. So you don't quite see it. It doesn't have any sort of buttons or anything, just this big collar. But I like that it's long. I know we've talked about this because I think Aaron's talked about the pockets on it. It has these beautiful, huge pockets. It kind of folds over right into the pocket. The downside is there isn't a lot of structure to the pocket. So um, if you wanna put anything other than your hands in there, it's gonna grow even more. But it's got this really cool texture in the back. Oh, here's my tag. Let me get that out of the way. Which looks really neat and it's totally worth the effort. It's not like it's a lot of effort. It just, it's a little bit slow, that's all. Tammy, you got it to work. Yay. <laughs> huh? Uh-oh, something just happened to my computer. Oh, my screen went black. I got, I'm, I am, I am not, I'm not good with technology. Technology is not good with me is what it is. I don't know. It misbehaves. Could be this computer that I've had just a, a nightmare of a time with. Um, so the, the portage sweater, I, I love it. It's, um, after it's been on display here for a while, it may end up my, one of my, um, camping sweaters. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm, I'm having problems with words tonight. But it's very cozy. Um, uh, so yeah, it's Malabrigo Arroyo. I did get some of that in, so I have a Malabrigo box here to talk about later. Um, what did I finish? I finished two of the pieces of the Baby's Day Out ensemble. So I mentioned last week that I was trying out this yarn, um, and I'm still not going to talk too much about it yet because it's... Um, 
I haven't washed it and dried it yet. So I got the little sweater done. You see the shine? It's like this shiny cotton, mostly cotton with a little bit of something in it. <laughs> How's that? 75% Peruvian cotton, 25% lyocell. Just this little knit and pearl detail. It's, um, it's knit in pieces and then seamed, the, or then the sleeves are attached. It's knit in the round for the body. Sleeves are knit separate. Um, I had some left over. So with three of these little balls, I had enough to make the hat and the sweater. These are supposed to both be six to nine months. Clearly the hat is way bigger than the sweater. So this is one of those cases where I wanted to, um, I knit it the way the pattern was written, mostly because I would not do this if I was gifting it to somebody, but I wanted to show, look at how tiny that neckline is. <laughs> this, is this cracks me up. This is supposed to go over a six to nine month neck. This is supposed to be for the head of a six to nine month year old. It's, it's the same head that has to go here and here. So if you follow the pattern, that's not nearly enough stitches or um, Karen had mentioned maybe instead of seaming one side, you put little buttons on there and leave that open. That would be really cute too. So I meant to wash this and dry this over the weekend because it's supposed to be durable, machine washable and dryable. Um, I didn't do that. So I still wanna play around with the yarn a little bit before I decide if it's, if it's something that I will bring into the shop or not. I'm hoping it is because it was really lovely to work with. So soft. So that's what I finished. What am I working on? Um, there was a little bit of discussion back and forth about the snarkometer. So Casapinka's um, six week knit along, which I don't know if very many of you saw who are participating, but it looks like it might be seven weeks in the, on like the last page of this last clue, it said something about um, skipping a week between four and five or five and six. So I don't know, I'll be curious about that. But this is, now I've got clues one, two, and three. So week one, see if I can scrunch this up a little bit so you can see. Week one was everything below the orange. Week two was up to this lace. Now week three was a lot of orange and red. And then this, this crisscrossy, isn't that cool? It is, um, Melissa, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> um, so that little crisscross, stuff is fun. It, it's um, kind of dropped stitches, stitches and um, passing them over. If you, if you follow her directions for it, stitch by stitch or word by word, it does work and she does have a video, thankfully, but they're just, I just think they're really neat looking these little, I think she calls them double crosses. So last week I mentioned that she suggested you put two intentional mistakes in this section. And I said, I'll probably make mistakes enough on my own. I don't need to do that, which I did. And I'll point them out to you guys, just so you know, I'm not a machine and I'm not perfect. Um, I, I accidentally crossed over. Let's see if we can show this. So when these cross, you have to be careful not to get not to knit them out of order, otherwise they start twisting. Lisa, it's like a sampler. Yes, I, I love how it looks too. So I had to drop down and fix a couple of these. This one, I didn't fix right and it's gonna bug me. So I may end up going to duplicate stitch it, but I'm just gonna leave it there because it is, it's a mistake and that's okay. It's okay, I don't have to fix it. Who knows, by the time I'm done with this thing, I might just, be ready to be done and not not fix it. I wove all my ends in. And then this last section, I was supposed to only have four stripes, one, two, three, four, five. I have five because 
I was supposed to end with the red and I started knitting another roll of orange. And then I decided it'd be easier to knit two more rows than it would be to rip two rows out. <laughs> yes, Diane, it's, I know it's, it's gonna be okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just saying I don't have to put intentional mistakes in because I'll, if left up to my own devices, I will do it on my own. So the whole thing is going to be, this is as deep as the scarf is going to be. It's just gonna keep growing wider. So we should be technically halfway through if it's a six week thing. And this is three weeks worth. Um, with the lace sections in here, it's gonna block out beautifully. We got red lace. I know that's kind of hard to see. Little feather and fan, and then the white lace down below. So I'm working on that. I, while I was waiting for that clue to come out on Saturday, I worked more on my curly cue. <laughs> I tried to work on it more, um, but it's it's getting big and it's getting quite warm. Yeah, I gotta take a step back again for this one. It's growing. So I think if my if my guess is right, I only have one, two, three sections left to do. And then it will be done. This is out of Juniper Moon Cumulus. Um, so it's cumulus dappled, which looks like this in this game. Oh, sorry, it's so bright. Cumulus dappled. That's what I'm using for the star in the middle that gives you those little stripes. Then for these edge pieces, I'm using cumulus rainbow. Clearly rainbow is more like the style, not the colors. That does this slow gradient from taupe to brownie olive to bluey grays. So Cherry, how's the pattern for the fingerless mitts coming? It's almost done. So I have it written out. Um, I'm trying to, with a lot of uh, the patterns that I write, trying to put stitch counts in and almost like a row by row thing. So it's easier for, um, less confident knitters to follow, I guess would be the way to put it. So I've got it, I've got it written out and I'm hoping to have it in PDF form and able to email or mail out to people soon. So I will make sure that I've got you on that list of people that want it. I think I do. But I'm writing a note anyways. Knit pattern. And I don't have any more yarn for those kits yet because Malabrigo is saying four to six weeks, it's gonna take them to ship from when I order to when they will ship and they ship from Miami. So they're just like everything else. We're having a hard time getting anything. Um, oh, I did cast on something new. So after finishing my slipping sideways, which I, I love that thing. I love how it fits. I love how it, feels. Um, the yarn is fantastic with that um, heritage silk paints and the heritage solids. <laughs> okay, good. Yay. Look at all you guys. We'll have to, we'll have to make sure that I get it available for, for everybody. So after doing that on size two and a half needles, I needed something faster. This pattern has been kind of on my mind and on my wish list for a couple years. It's called the Carbath. It is written for DK. I believe it's DK Help Double, but I decided I'm just going to use a chunky yarn. It's got this really cool detail, the way you do the decreases. So instead of doing like regular raglan decreases, it has this cool detail. Um, I wish there was a better picture, but there really isn't. It's knit from the bottom up. There is no waist shaping or anything, so it would be easy enough to 
make it longer, it does show as kind of like a um, cropped length. So I didn't want to swatch, <laughs> which might come back to bite me, but we'll see. I decided instead of swatching, I could just start a sleeve because it's done in the round. I would have wanted to swatch in the round anyway. So why not work on a sleeve? This color has been in debates with people on what color it is. So I don't know if you can see. It's, it's a good example of how if you mix red and green, you get brown. <laughs> So from a distance, it looks kind of like that, that muddy brown color, but you can see when it's spun, it's this really bright red, this really bright green. So I, I kind of think it's like a, I call it like a dark camo. Um, so I got my two sleeves done. And would have saved myself some time if I had just done them at the same time, or at least tandem instead of one, then the other. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. And then today I decided to cast on for the body and start. So it starts with the ribbing and then goes up to just a straight stockinette body. Um, so it would be very easy to make it less cropped if you wanted. What I like is in using this chunky instead of, um, a DK held double. I'm using LRA's Chunky Merino Superwash in the color Rainforest Heather. So they're calling it, well, man, I can't really see that very well, sorry. They're calling it a rainforest color, which would, to me would be green anyway. It takes anywhere from 540 to 960 yards, which of this would be anywhere from four to eight skeins. So if you look at the pattern, don't let the yardage fool you because it's um, it's going to tell you twice as much yardage because you it's written for two yarns being held together. So if that's something that oh they have a cardigan version too, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, the wave of change jacket that I did, I did the cardigan version and she has a pullover. So this, I figured I'd do the pullover since there's a cardigan version also. I have of that yarn, if it was something you were interested in, I have a sweaters quantity enough of each of these four colors. So I've got this gorgeous rosewood heather. It's pretty heathery red. It's not, it's not as bright as it looks in that. Stonewall Heather. I, I believe I have enough to do two or three sweaters with this gray. I try and make my shop samples in colors that are less, um, less easy for people to visualize what it's going to look like. I mean, I, you can look at a solid gray yarn and visualize what a solid gray sweater is going to look like. But with the green, you may not know. And then I've got this amethyst, this beautiful purple amethyst heather. So Melissa put info in there. I'm smoking jacket. <laughs> I already made you a smoking jacket. <laughs> you guys, that's my husband commenting on there. I, you want that? Pretty sure I probably ordered this husband to make you some sort of smoking jacket, but I made you one already. <laughs> you could get back into knitting and make one yourself. <laughs> okay, so that's what I am working on. What is coming up? So I still have three weeks worth of clues for my snarkometer. So I'll be working on that for a while. Um, Stephen West is supposed to be on Instagram tonight talking about. Um, <laughs> um his October mystery knit along so um the Casa Pinka one is a mystery knit along where we really didn't know much about it before it started and Stephen West does the same thing every October Stephen West this is his seventh I believe 
um, knit along mystery, well, fall mystery knit along. I think he does them throughout the year too. Um, so he's supposed to be going on Instagram live tonight talking about yarn pairings for it. Um, I did share something the other day about it that it's called something about choreography. That's all I remember. Um, <clears throat> so I will be checking that out. He's putting the pattern, the pre-sale for the pattern available as of September 1st, which would be Wednesday. And we will have kits here in the shop. I don't know if it will be with um, a specific dyer or if we will just be putting kits together on our own. I have no idea if it's going to be two skeins or if it's going to be 10 skeins. It's probably not going to be 10 skeins, but he does tend to go for larger projects. Um, but we want to make sure that, that it's not cost prohibitive for everybody. So um, do know that I will be working on putting kits together. Shawlography. Thank you, Aaron. Of course you would know. <laughs> it's five skeins for sure. Oh, that's so much yarn, you guys. But let's see, Angie Shawlography is the name of the pattern. Well, so for those of you that have watched it already, tell me what else he's said about it, whether it's um, if you want a lot, if he's recommending a lot of contrasting colors or the, the yarns that he had in his little teaser photo the other day were all in the same tones, more of a um, tonal. So five colors, 100 grams of each. Yeah, we're going to have to. That's a lot of yarn. What we may end up doing is just kind of having a matching party here where we get one or two skeins. If you have one or two skeins at home that you think might work well, um, you can bring them in and we can pair them with other things. Something to think about. <laughs> Mom's saying hi to Jackie. Hi, Jackie. I didn't see you pop on. So that is coming up. I will be working on that as soon as I am able. If, um, if it works out well, it might be a good use for some of the Dream and Color pop-up games. So the pop-up club starts September. Um, mine will be shipping out. What did they tell me? Today or tomorrow, um, mine is going to be shipping out. I had them add on some extra um, semi-solids to go to coordinate with September's. Um, actually coordinate with all of them. So that might be a really good place to start for pulling colors for that. So um, I do still have some pre-orders out there for the pop-up club that is um, each month they release an exclusive color. It is smushy cashmere. So it's merino, superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon. Melissa, five contrast gains, solid, semi-solid, and lightly speckled, something light, something medium, something dark. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, we'll play around with that a little bit. Um, Chandra says she likes the idea of a matching. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping, Chandra said she still has to finish her last one. I'm hoping this one doesn't have as many stitches by the time it's done. So last year's, I can grab it. Mine needs to be reblocked too, because um, it's been scrunched up for a little while. But this is last year's slip extravaganza. And it was fun. I was able to keep up. What I really like about when Stephen West does a knit along, he does fantastic tutorials. Um, he doesn't make you feel like you are dumb for asking questions or that you should know more things than you do. Um, he really makes it accessible for, for lots of levels of people. So uh, I, I'm excited. I think it will be fun. I will kind of take a look at what he's recommending for kits because of course he's got his own yarn shop in Amsterdam and they'll do their own kits too. So we'll play around with that a little bit. All right, my earbud's gonna die. I'm gonna try my other one. We'll see 
if this works or not. I was having problems with it earlier. So I'm gonna try this and see if one works and one doesn't. Tell me. Melissa, can you hear me? Okay, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it worked that time, good. Okay, so uh, that coming up. So I do have um, pre-orders available for the pop-up club and for the socket club. Socket is Dreams um, four month club that went August and we'll get September, October and November. I posted last week the photo, a beautiful um, picture of like wine country, lots of greens and purples. I think it had some really brights in there. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the, um, the sparkle, Saginaw sparkle yarn that I got from Ridiculous. It's not quite that bright, but it looks really, really cool. So uh, once I get them in store, they go to full price. If you pre-order right now, either online or in store, there's a little bit of a discount for either one of those. Um, okay, let's see. Um, a couple kind of housekeeping things are retreat. Uh, out at Bay Shore is September 23rd through the 28th. That is coming up very quickly. Um, hi, Donna. Um, I believe I still have some spots available. I had to reach out to the, um, the coordinator. I left her a message today to kind of confirm numbers and everything. But uh, for those of you that did sign up, I sent out invoices for remaining balances. And within the next two weeks, week to two weeks, I'll be sending an email out with more info. <laughs> Ready for the retreat. Yes, I know we all wanna be, I mean, I get to sit in it with people around the table sometimes, but it's just for little bits of time here and there. And even I feel like at the retreat, I can relax a little bit and enjoy and visit and play with yarn. How many punchers? <laughs> yes. Oh, Melissa, we might, I might need to work with you on some little gifts for people too. Huh. I have to think about that. I'm so not a planner. It's hard for me to plan events like this because I just want to fly by the seat of my pants. And it's hard to do that when 30 some people are involved. Um, so that's coming up. So one of the things that has come up lately is that it seems like the cost of patterns on Ravelry has increased. And I've noticed that as well. And one, there's not a whole lot I can do about that, but I do want to let you all know that when a pattern is enabled for in-store sales, so not all patterns I don't have the ability to sell all the patterns through the shop's Ravelry account. If it's enabled for in-store sales, if a pattern's $10 on Ravelry, you'll pay $10 whether you buy it on your own or you buy it through the shop, we buy it for you. If we buy it for you, it still ends up in your library, in your Ravelry library. It still can get um, a PDF emailed to you. The benefit of doing it here is for 25 cents a page, we can print it we, in color. Um, we've got a color laser printer and put them in nice sleeves. Um, and it's the same price, it's $10, whether you buy it through us or you buy it on your own. The difference is, well, there are a couple differences. One, I can print it for you. Two, um, I have access to be able to reprint it if you've lost it. That's not, I don't have just unlimited access to all the patterns, so that's, it gets a little tricky that way. Also, I get a little bit of a discount when Ravelry charges the shop at the end of the month. So um, the shop gets a little bit of kickback or support in it, where if you're paying $10 for the pattern, if you buy it on your own, you're, you're out the $10. If you buy it through the shop, like eight, seven or $8 goes to the designer and the shop gets to keep that little bit of difference. So that helps keep my lights on, keep the doors open, keep the Wi-Fi going, hopefully. <laughs> uh, it also helps me in that it, I was trying to explain it to Melissa and the only thing I could come up with was like, 
it gives me street cred with designers where if it's easier for me to reach out to designers and approach them about a collaboration or anything like that, because if they can see that I have driven traffic to their patterns and I've promoted their patterns and supported their business already, it's a little bit, um, you know, there are metrics for everything. So designers can see that. Yes, supporting the designer and the shop. And you guys, I've tried to design a couple patterns and it is not as, <laughs> it's not easy. There's a lot of math involved, especially if something has more than one size. So I wanted to touch on that a little bit. All right, so I have two boxes of yarn here. I have a box from Earth and I have a box from Malabrigo. So the box from Earth is smaller. So I will go through that first, but um, <laughs> just a dollar, Melissa. <laughs> I, I know what she's saying. Um, Thursday night, that was my other housekeeping thing. Um, Thursday night knitting, Deb has been hosting um, just kind of an open, not a, not a shop organized event, but just kind of an um, open invitation for people to come and sit, knit, chat, have dinner. Uh, for the past few months, they've been able to do that at the boardroom, which is the restaurant that stays open later and it's on the back side of, or the front side of the building here. Um, I need to pass on to everybody that the boardroom is temporarily closed. They are doing some, uh, they're having staffing issues among other things, I think. And so Thursday nights at the boardroom can't happen, but. I have offered the shop space for people to be able to come in here. Deb will be here, um, but we've got the table. We've got extra chairs for, for the casual um, Thursday night knitting. This space is available. Um, Deb has spoken with a couple of the regular food vendors since the market closes at six and the, um, the night knitting goes like 6.30 till uh, 8.39, whenever they decide to disperse. Um, Deb has spoken with a couple of the food vendors here to see if, uh, if those of you that want to attend, if you call to like make and bacon or Saigon sandwich or taste to Chicago, if you call in your order ahead of time and pay for it, they will, um, they'll pretty much wait until the end of the day at the very last minute, then they'll come in and bring it in. So you should have hot food when you get here. So, um, I told Deb I would I would make sure that I mentioned that. I hate for people to show up at the boardroom and then obviously you can't get in. The downside is we can't, I can't sell you alcohol, but I also can't stand here and ask you what's in your sippy cup. So <laughs> there's that. All right. So yarn. I got more yarn for the butterfly shawl, the papillon which let's see if I can do this without my camera falling up there. See those three. It's really hard to see There's They all have the same colors in them. Um, it's just the contrast color that's different. So um, the Papillon uses unique fingering. And I usually no matter how much of this I order, I'm usually sold out of my kits for these within a week or two. So um, <laughs> thank you, Sherry and Cheryl. <laughs> so the butterfly, what's most popular is the black and, and bright. And since I can't seem to get the heritage black, I've got the harvest fingering. So it takes two of they're self-striping, the unique self-striping, and one of a salad. Um, what's most popular is black. So this is um, harvest fingering. It, it's naturally dyed, dyed with natural dyes. So not chemically dyed. And I have no idea. I think it's Tuha, but I don't know what that is, the name of it. T. 
T H U J A. Yeah, I don't know. It's black. Cheryl, do I have any more passports? I think you're thinking of the West Michigan Yarn Quest. That's on the other side of the state. I don't do that one. Um, so I have enough for five kits. I think Melissa put on there, they're $89 for the kit plus tax. That does include the pattern. If you have the pattern already, then it's going to be less expensive than that. Um, but it is, it's been selling like hotcakes. If you want something other than the black, you can message me and let me know and we can play around with, with colors and find something else for you. So I finally got more of that. I got more of the Harmony DK, which is what is in my topographical scarf. So same designer, Marianne Mel Melcore. Um, this one's just done lengthwise with a heavier yarn. We have chatted before about um, which one would be a, uh, a, an easier place to start. If you were going to do short rows and follow one of this designer's patterns, I would suggest the scarf before you tackle the shawl. Yes, it's a lot of stitches to cast on. I think it's 310 stitches, but your stitch count never changes. With a triangular shawl, every time you're doing increases, your stitch count changes and it's a little bit trickier to keep track of things. With this, it's just pretty much straightforward. Your stitches stay stacked on top of each other. So I got more yarn for that. I used a really dark navy in mine, but I can't get that right now. So I did order their Harvest DK. So the DK version of Harvest is what I used for my fireworks sweater. Um, what quite a few of us are using for the fireworks sweater. And it takes two of the rainbow and one of the solid for that. Topographical scarf kits, 85 plus tax. Again, if you don't need the pattern, if you have the pattern already, there's a little bit of a discount there for that. But if you need one, let me know because these, I do have a couple pre-orders, so I may not even have five available. I might have less than five. I may have four. And it's a really, I mean, it's a really cool scarf and a really big scarf. I love this thing. So I tried to open I, some of these out of the, out of the bags a little bit because their bags are really crunchy. I did get a couple extra bags of Harvest DK in other colors. So I got black grape. And now you're gonna listen to it. And grape leaf. So again, natural dyes. This is the grape leaf. Hey, Kristen. I ordered some. Um, Eileen yeah. looks like she'd like to know how hard the scarf was. Oh, um, if you can count to 10, <laughs> you'll do pretty well, Eileen. Aileen. So it's, it's a lot of short rows. So um, you like knit eight, wrap and turn, knit 10, wrap and turn. So it's, um, it's not complicated in that there are a lot of different stitches to do. It's just going back and forth a lot. So if you're somebody who can pay attention and follow instructions, it's really not that difficult. And of course, we're always here to help. I know, Sarah, isn't that beautiful? So this is what um, Nicole is using this for her fireworks sweater. And it's just, oh, it's gorgeous knit up. I think Stacy is too. I can't remember. So that's. What did I say? Grape leaf. That's pretty green. And this one, the black grape is what Karen and Lisa. Diane, did you wrap and turn or German short rows? I did wrap and turn, Diane, because I I think German short rows look better when you're knitting a stockinette fabric. But in garter, I think 
um, just a standard wrap and turn work okay. And I, it didn't bother me too much to do them. I do think once you get into German short rows, it's a little bit quicker. You don't have to worry about picking up those wraps. It could be the last time I tried German short rows on my butterfly though. I just wasn't very good at it. <laughs> Okay, so then this is the color that Karen and Lisa are both using for their fireworks, this black grape. And it is so, these, these skeins don't do it justice because when you see it, when you see the fabric knit up, you really get to see the, the subtle shifts in the color. It looks so solid in this, but you can see a little bit, the darks and lights. Oh, this stuff is gorgeous. So I'm, I'm trying to keep more sweaters quantities of this Harvest DK in the shop. Um, but I can always special order too, because obviously most of us need more than one bag for a sweaters quantity of yarn. And it's hard for me to guess what people want. The last two different yarns, yes, Lisa is right. It's deeper looking in person and it varies. Um, batch to batch too so as as any of you who saw my firework sweater <laughs> you know sometimes it's darker sometimes it's lighter so this last yarn that i got is 100 percent cotton and it's bulky 100 grams 95 yards and it's galate 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 i only ordered a couple colors because i wanted to play around with it a little bit <laughs> Not today anyways, Melissa, yes. So this Galaxy, it's, it's $21 a stain. Again, it's a bulky 100% cotton. So if you have people that you wanna make, um, you see all these pretty um, scarves, shawls, hats, but you don't wanna make, I don't, you don't wanna use wool for things. Um, the Instant Shawl uses this yarn. It's written for this yarn, it takes two skeins and it's on my list for quick knits for Christmas. It's a really cool looking open shawl. Um, I think she's got it where you can put tassels on it or a tassel on it. I can't remember. <laughs> it's in my queue as one of my next, 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 next projects to work on. So I've got, I've got only enough for three kits of each. And if I don't sell all the kits, then I will make a sample. Um, you all tell me whether you think I should knit the grays or the creams. This cream is really hard to, to show. I wish I could not have it so bright. It's more accurate there, up here. It's kind of creamy taupey colors. I, let's see if I can, let me play around with this for a minute. If I don't screw up too much stuff, because it'll change colors. Woo, that's not it. Nope, that's not it either. <laughs> I tried. So let me know if you think I should knit up the, the cream colors or the gray colors. I'm open to either. If it, if it turns out really nice, I may knit another one with Malabrigo Chunky. It would take two skeins of Malabrigo Chunky. And again, it's gonna be on my list of quick knits for the fall for the holidays, or really whenever. If it gets chilly and we need something fast, I think this will work. All right, so that's all I got from Earth. Now I have this Malabrigo box. It's a big box. So I have in here Silk Paca, which is a lace. I have Mora, which is their um, fingering 100% silk fingering weight yarn. It makes the most luscious projects. I've seen it. Uh, Joan knit her sister a sweater, a mother of the bride sweater, it, and it turned out gorgeous. Um, I have a chance to do a beaded scarf with that. That might be one of my um, retreat projects too. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, so then I've got Sock, Arroyo, Verano, and Noob, which is roving. So I'm going kind of lightweight to heavy. 
So the first is silk paca. These come in 50 gram skeins. It's 420 yards lace weight, 70% baby alpaca, 30% silk. They're such a good deal, $12 a piece for this. And look at the shine on that. You gotta love silk for that shine. This is what I used. I had it sitting here. I just don't know what I did with it. Um, Melissa puts prices and info in the comments about the yarns I talk about. If there's anything that you are interested in, put it in the comments or message us afterwards. So the silk paca is what I used in my, it's called little white cardi, but clearly it's not white in my little white cardi. I really like using silk paca in place of mohair for patterns where they have you hold uh, like a silk mohair with something else. It gives you a little bit of fuzz, but it's not quite that intense halo that mohair has. So that's Azul Profundo. Isn't that gorgeous? I only got one bag, one color of this. Again, Malabrigo is four to six weeks out. So, and I don't ever know if I'm actually gonna get what I ordered. So I'm, I'm not gonna be, <laughs> I'm not gonna be picky about it. If they can send me some stuff, then I'm happy. So the Mora, I did, many of you have seen, um, I'm looking above the camera because I have it hanging up on the wall, the storm shawl that I did by Hobie Locatelli. Um, I did that out of two skeins of Mora in the Poseon color. Pure mulberry silk. They don't even give you like a 100% or anything. It's just pure mulberry silk. My I can't see that. Not. Again, it's silk. It's shiny. There's, this is their simple taupe. If I hold it up against me, it's a little bit easier to see the color, but it's this beautiful silvery taupe. I, I really do think I'm gonna take two of these and make a beaded scarf. There's a pattern I have in mind and it's, um, it's one that I did a while back, but I don't have the yarn I knit it in. So I wanna re-knit the sample. And I think that will be lovely. So I got that taupe color and then there's this I feel like Diana the color Diana is like the muted sister of Anniversario so here's Diana again as with most Melabrigo yarns they vary stain to stain bag to bag so this has like the greens and yellows the bright pinks reds oranges just beautiful yarn like this that storm shawl that i did is perfect because it's got a little bit of patterning in it but it's simple enough that it just lets the yarn show off and look gorgeous so those are the two colors i got of that yarn sock so in malabrigo sock which is 100 percent superwash wool 440 yards and 100 gram skeins they, uh, Malabrigo has this whole fairy tale, um, what are they calling it? Like magical fairy tale, something like that. A whole, all of these, they have like yarns called Three Little Pigs and Ursula we talked about before, which I didn't even get a chance to put it on the wall really. I think it was up there for a day before it went away. So this one is called Land of Oz. So it's like this greeny gold color and this gray. I ordered this one intentionally because two of the yarns that I have in store already are Gingy, two of the colors, which is like this gray yellow. And then that's the same thing. Geppetto, which is like a gray camel color. So my thoughts were that this would make a beautiful fade. I couldn't decide which way it went because I like them both, both ways. So I think I like this in the middle. 
they all have kind of like this beautiful gray undertone to them, but the yellow to the greeny yellows to the browns, that would be beautiful. I just have a couple, I have a couple skeins of gingy because I put some kits together for the temperance shawl, which you can kind of see back there. That was Malibri Goes Knit Along that they did earlier. So that's one of the colors I got, Land of Oz. I don't even think I talked about these others when I got them in though, Geppetto. So fun. Then the other color I got is not part of that collection. Um, Leslie asked me to order a skein. So of course I had to order a bag and I got lettuce, which I have had in Rios, but not in sock before. So it is this bright, beautiful, actually it would be kind of fun to do. That is your contrast color for a butterfly instead of the black. That would be really fun. Something to think about. And a couple different colors of Arroyo. So like I said, that's what I used for this sweater. Arroyo is Sport DK. I've kind of used it interchangeably. Deb has Deb used it for her Puget Sound sweater. Um, I will grab it because the colors are gorgeous. And every time, every time I get an order from Malabrigo, I'm ordering like three, four bags of this and then it doesn't last very long. But this is for Puget Sound sweater. The colors are, I didn't even, the contrast color is pearl. The main color is greenish blue. But that, this is what, what I love about Malabrigo, look at that. Just the variation, it's not, not a solid solid. Some people want a solid solid and I get that, but this, it's beautiful. Oh, two stains, okay. <laughs> so this is immortal. You guys look at this color. I just wanna make all the things and I'm definitely in a green in a green mode right now. Immortal. I have used this to make multiple sweaters, um, cowls, scarves, hats. I have a crochet project around here somewhere too that, um, that used a couple of those, but I don't know where that went. Uh, that was Immortal. This is Reflecting Pool. Sometimes when customers special order a bag of yarn for a sweater, I end up wanting to get a second bag because I like the color too. So this is Reflecting Pool. Again, this is Arroyo. So it's a little bit lighter than the greenish blue. So if you didn't want something quite so deep, this Reflecting Pool would be a step lighter from there. Yes, Diane, I know the colors are just, I just can't get over them. So pearl is the contrast color. I, I have my little scissors here. I was trying to at least cut the bags open ahead of time, but I got busy talking with Melissa. Pearl is the contrast color from Deb's, from the yoke on Deb's sweater. And it's like this gray, but it's like a purpley gray. Sometimes it's more purple, sometimes it's more brown. Again, it's, it changes batch to batch. <laughs> this is the one that I was up in Gladwin at, what is the name of that yarn store? Yarn for you? Hmm, you guys are gonna have to let me know, but she had a sample of the Nancho, Casapinka's Nancho. And this was her main color in there. And I just fell in love with it. This Wabi Sabi. It's like wasabi, but not Wabi Sabi. Like these teals 
and greens, they get like this olive green in there. So compared to what? Yes, Jean, I think so too. I know I have the note somewhere. I just have to find it. I ordered a lot of pearl. Va is what I used for the sweater I'm wearing. This is Wabi Sabi. So again, it's like the lighter sibling of the two. This one obviously is more blue. It's got that beautiful turquoise and teal in there. Oh, I might've ordered a couple bags of this just because it might need to be a sweater for me too. But yeah, stain to stain, they look different. Similar, but different. The last color of Arroyo that I got is Galaxy. It's one of their speckles. And I love that they're doing speckles on a DK base. So it's like purples, yellows, reds. It's, it's just phenomenal. Wabi Sabi you pre-ordered? Hmm. I'm gonna have to dig in a little bit deeper on that one, Jean. I'll have to find my list. Quinn, the name of the pattern I'm wearing is Pute, no, Portage. The Portage sweater by Melissa Sashwari. So the next yarn I've gotten a few colors of, but I haven't had a chance to play around with it um, to make really any samples in it. Malabrigo's um, Verano, 100% Pima cotton. They call it a worsted DK, 205 yards in 100 grams. This is Arach Arachania, like arachnophobia. <laughs> More blues and greens, you guys. <laughs> a lot of that too is what they had in stock. So if if any of you have knit anything with their cotton, with Verano, I would love, um, I would love to know. I'd love to know what you made, what you think of it. I mean, fourteen ninety nine a skein, and hand wash, cool water, dry flat. I think I've got a couple tops that I need to re knit, and I think this this cotton yarn would be fun. I have lemon wedge. This is my spring yellow lovers <laughs> oh my light's so bright this is not even I wonder maybe if I can turn it down it's still let's turn it off for a second it's a little bit better <laughs> but it's it's bright you guys it is Lemon wedge, it is yellow. Math made a breathe and hope with it. Oh, oh, with a royal, yes. And that's what I love about shawls. You can pretty much knit it with any yarn. You just need to make sure you have enough yardage. And um, adjust your needle size. Then you could end up with something bigger or smaller based on what the pattern is. Natural, so undyed essentially I wish I could I wish I could get this to not be so bright for you guys some of that though is just the um the cotton it's it definitely doesn't have the shine that silk does but it it is very beautiful alpaca metal I'm looking at some of the other colors in the box here and I feel like I feel like I must have had something in mind when I ordered them. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back through my queue and see. So alpaca metal is this. It's it's like a true gray. Might be a little bit green, but Malabrigo, um, like I mentioned, sometimes they their grays go purple, sometimes they go blue. This one is just like a nice light gray. Um, black. It. Kristen, does the cotton feel soft? Yes. 
Yes, it does, Lisa. It's not like, um, it's not like the fuzzy softness of the cumulus, like I'm using it for my blanket. It would be, it's, it's soft, but smooth. So it would be great for um, spring, summer garments. Black, it's black. A very solid black. And I must have been, I must have had something in mind when I ordered these, you guys, because this time of year is not when I'm normally ordering this stuff, but lime. Look at this. I, I just, I can't get over how beautiful it is. I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but obviously lemon and lime need to be something. Maybe I was thinking baby stuff. Baby stuff would be fun. Mm. <laughs> mm, sorry. Oh, you guys have been going over an hour. I'm almost done. I've got roving left. So when I was up in Gladwin chatting with um, Martha, the woman that owns the yarn store up there, she mentioned that um, our rep had told her that Malabrigo was discontinuing their roving. So I tried to get as much as I could. This time I only got two colors, but their roving comes in braids that are, um, <laughs> it's funny, it says five yards. <laughs> it's four ounces. Maybe I guess if you pulled it, if you just held it out, it would be five yards, but it's roving. So it's meant to be spun. This is Via Electrica. It's 100% merino wool, not superwash. So when you get hand dyed roving like this, sometimes it's very compacted and it feels like it's slightly felted. You just need to kind of play with it a little bit. And that's Melissa's favorite part is to make it very fuzzy, fuzzier. <laughs> so I only got two colors this time. I got Via Electrica, which it looks like I only got one bag, two bags of. So if you want any quantity to spin for sweaters, anything like that, I got two bags of this. They come in, um, they come four braids per bag. The other color is lavanda. I know, Melissa, it's beautiful. She's saying it's very pretty. I... You could, you could use it for thrones as long as somebody else was willing to felt them for you. <laughs> so if you, um, even if you don't spin, roving is a lot of times what people use to do thrummed projects where you're like knitting a mitten and you put these big tufts of wool throughout it that makes them like super fuzzy. Um, slippers, um, Joyce has done thrummed, is it Joyce? No, Suzanne, I think was doing thrummed slippers. So here's the other color I got, lavanda. Isn't that beautiful? And my purple lovers are gonna love this. Little bit of browns in there. <laughs> and I ordered as much as I could of this. So it looks like I have four bags of this. Definitely enough for a couple projects. And they are, what, $15 for four ounces and a lot of spinning fun. All right, that got me through everything, both boxes. Um, as usual, if there's anything that you see that you have questions about, feel free to put it in the comments. Even if you're watching after the fact, I always go back through and, and look at the comments. Melissa helps me out with that too. Um, Diane, you've never spun, you should. You should try that sometime, <laughs> Joyce. Okay, you did make four of those. It's been a while. I can't. I couldn't keep it straight. Um, if you saw a pattern or design that I talked about that you would be interested in um, me finding different colors for you, let me know. I'm happy to do that too. I will not be on next Monday because it is Labor Day. I almost said Memorial Day. Um, Victoria went back to school this morning and 
going to take me probably two weeks to get back into the routine of um, getting up and having to share the house with somebody else at 6 a.m. instead of me being the only one up. So maybe taking a week off next week is a good idea. Um, where you guys, I don't normally say um this often. Just making through, I went, making sure I went through everything on my list. We did go to a coffee shop in, starts with an M and it's south of Vassar, Millington uh, on Sunday. And I have no idea. I posted a picture of Victoria in the outside the place. I have no idea how to pronounce it. A silly, a silly not. I have no idea. <laughs> Mary, next time I see you, maybe you'll have to help me figure out how to pronounce it or put it, put it phonetically so I can know how to pronounce it. Did the black one come in for the sweater that Victoria picked out? Charlene, it did not. And I haven't heard an answer on what's going on with that. I do have another box on its way to me that I think will get here. Uh, I didn't track it, but I think it's going to get here this week. I'm hoping it will be in there. If not, I will find an alternate solution and we will make sure that, that that's just not sitting out there for a long time. Because I want you guys to be able to make the things. Sherry, have a good and safe holiday. You too, Holly. <laughs> yes, so it's only gonna be, I'm only taking one week off and then I will be back. So make sure you tune in for that. And I hope everybody else has a safe and happy holiday weekend. It's Labor Day weekend coming up. We're gonna relax up at the campground. I hope you all are able to take some time off. Don't labor too hard and relax. I will see you in two weeks, unless you stop into the shop, see me sooner. We do have normal hours this weekend. So we are open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 10 to six as usual. No changes there. All right, everybody have a great week. I hope you are creative and were inspired to do something new or finish something you already have. And I will chat with all of you 